Hello everyone, welcome to Saturday Morning Yoga. It's me, Jamie, and it's great to have you here. I hope you've cleared some space, rolled out the mats, and got the whole family together ready to enjoy some special yoga time. It's great. Now, aren't our imaginations amazing? So special. Well, this is a story that really celebrates the imagination. It's the story of Alice in Wonderland, which is totally mad. We meet all sorts of characters and do all sorts of crazy things. So let's get started and enjoy our yoga. Hello everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy, just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Now we're ready to begin. And today we've got a special story that you might already know. It's Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Lots of funny things happen in this story, but we get to go to Wonderland. So let's get started. Coming up to stand. Oh, something funny's happening. Oh, what's happening? Oh, Everything's gone really big. I'm really small. Goodness me, this is very strange indeed. Oh, oh, something else funny is happening. Oh, I seem to have gone really big. I'm enormous now. And look, I'm going to have a look. Can you see me? Oh, this is no good for yoga, is it? Everything's gone really tiny. Oh dear. Oh, 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 hang on a minute. Oh, oh. Ah, there we go. Back to Norman again. Phew. Now we can get started with the yoga. What? What's funny? I'm what? No. Oh, oh. Hmm, okay, maybe this isn't going to work. Oh. Oh. Phew, now I'm back to normal again. Now we can get started with the yoga. Our story begins on a warm summer's day with the sun in the sky. So we reach up to the sun and we say, hello, sun. We find Alice lying on the riverbank with her sister, coming down to lie on your backs. Arms out wide and lift your legs up. Alice is feeling so very bored. Her legs go over to one side as her head twists to the other. And over to the other side as her head twists to the other. Oh, it's so lazy and hazy on this hot summer's day. Alice begins to have a daydream. All of a sudden, a white rabbit comes hopping by. Coming up to sit on your hands and knees. Spread your fingers wide, tuck your toes and lift your bottom. And then do a hop in the air. One, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. And again, one, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. The rabbit stops up on his hind legs, balancing on your tiptoes. He looks a bit worried. He twists from side to side, looking for something in his waistcoat pocket. He finds it, a pocket watch. He looks at the time and he tuts. Oh dear, I shall be late. I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. And he hops off, turning to the side, spread your fingers, lift your bottom and hop. One, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. And again, one, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. Alice jumps to her feet and she runs after the rabbit, running as fast as she can, chasing him. But he dives head first down into a rabbit hole. Turning to the side, reach your arms up and fold all the way forwards. Alice gets onto her tummy, coming down onto your bellies, hands under your shoulders and wriggle your shoulders up. 
she wriggles in to the rabbit hole after the white rabbit, without a thought of how she'll get out. But, oh dear, this was no little rabbit hole. This was a very big rabbit hole. Tuck your toes and lift your bottom up to the sky. Alice begins falling down. Her legs lift up, one at a time behind her. Help! Taking that foot down and lifting the other. Help! Coming to sit on your bottoms, everyone, with your legs crossed. The fall was lasting so long that Alice could sit with her legs crossed and she could twist and have a look from side to side, twisting to one side to see, ah, bookcases and cupboards. Ooh, and she twists the other side to see a jar of orange marmalade. Mmm. Finally, she lands at the bottom of the rabbit hole with a bump, twisting from side to side. Bump, bump. Boom, boom, boom. Phew! There's no sign of the white rabbit, but there are lots and lots of doors. Coming into door pose, coming to two knees, take your leg to the side, take your arm up to the sky and try and open a door. It's locked. Come to two knees again and try another door. Leg to the side, arm to the sky and come to the other side. That one's locked as well. <coughs> oh dear. Then Alice spots a table. Coming into table pose. Sitting on your bottoms, feet flat, knees bent, hands behind you. And lift up your bottom, coming up into table pose. On the table, there's a key. Yes, but it will only open the tiniest door. Coming onto all fours, Alice takes the key and she reaches it in to the tiniest door. It opens with a click. Yes, but to see what's on the other side, Alice has to lay flat on her tummy, coming to lie all the way down with your arms down by your side. Hmm, how she'd love to go through because on the other side is the loveliest garden. Hmm. Alice sits up and she gives her knees a hug, thinking, hmm, how am I going to get through there? And then she spots something else on the table. It's a little bottle with a label saying, drink me. Alice stands up. She puts her hands on her hips and she folds halfway forwards. She takes the little bottle. She brings it to her nose and she smells. Mmm. <sighs> She has a little sip. Mm. And then she drinks the whole lot. <sighs> Something funny begins to happen. Alice begins to shrink. Jump your feet and arms wide and take yourself from being a giant star to being a tiny little mouse on your knees, tucking yourself up into a tiny little mouse shape. Yes, Alice thinks now she'll be small enough to fit through the door, but oh no, the door's closed and the key's back on the table. So Alice comes all the way up. She stands high on her tippy toes, reaching her arms up to try and get the key from the table, but uh, it's just too high. Then she spots something else, a tiny little glass box. Coming to sit on your bottoms, joining the soles of your feet together, holding onto your toes and bring your head down towards your feet, closing your little glass box. She opens it up, lifting your head and inside is the tiniest little cake. And written in currants on the top are the letters E, A, T, M, E. Eat me. Alice reaches in. She gets the little cake and brings it close. She spreads her legs wide and then leans forward to gobble it all up. Mmm, delicious. But something funny begins to happen again. Alice begins to grow really, really big. Coming onto your knees, everyone, starting in mouse pose all the way forwards. Let's grow slowly, coming all the way up with your arms in front, all 
all the way up and over your head. She grows past her normal size until she's on her hands and knees, feeling very squashed. And then she lies down on her shoulder, feeling even more squashed. Oh no, now I'm too big. She starts to cry. <laughs> All of a sudden, the white rabbit comes hopping past again. Coming into your rabbit hopping pose. Spread your fingers, tuck your toes, lift your bottom and hop. One, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. And again, one, two, three, hoppity hoppity hop. He drops his fan. Alice sits up, feeling hot and bothered. And she takes the fan and she cools herself down with it. Crisscross your fingers, put them under your chin. Take a big breath all the way in and lift up your elbows, ready? And breathe out to the sky. And again, breathing in, lift your elbows. And breathe out to the sky. Magically, as she does this, she begins to shrink again. But oh dear, because of her crying, she's shrinking into a pool of her own salty tears. She has to swim. Coming onto your knees, everyone. Bring your hands into the centre and breathe in as you lift your arms. Ready? And breathe out as you lower down. Breathing in. And breathing out. It's a lake, and she's not alone in this lake. There's a little mouse in it with her, coming into mouse pose, turning to the side, on your knees, folding yourself all the way forwards. The mouse says, I'm a little bit frightened, so I'm swimming to the shore. There's also a duck in the water with her, coming into duck pose, high up onto your tippy toes, bending your knees, trying not to wobble, bring your hands onto your hips, roll your shoulders back and take your elbows back behind you. Ooh, the duck goes quack, 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 quack. There's also an eaglet in the water, which is a baby eagle coming up to stand. Cross one leg over the other, your arms wide, scissor your arms and wave with your underneath arm. Now twizzle them round and sit yourself down like a baby eagle. Ah, ah. There's also a lorry bird, which is a bit like a Tweety bird, only it's got a brush on the end of its tongue. Coming down onto two knees, wrap your arms around yourself and as you open up your beak, go and close. Let's try that on the other side. Arms wide, wrap them the other way, open your beak and and close. Well done, everyone. Alice thinks what a curious bunch of creatures they are. They all swim on their tummies to the shore, coming down to lie on your bellies and swim using your arms and your feet. They swim right to the shore and then they come up to stand and think, hmm, how shall we dry off? I know, let's have a race, a caucus race. It's simple. All you do is run around and around in a circle. And they're off. Here we go, everyone, running around and around and around. Goodness me. The race lasts for about half an hour until the dodo suddenly stops. Coming into dodo pose, down onto your knees, hands on your hips like little wings and take your elbows back behind you. He looks up and he says, the race is over. Everybody has won and all shall have prizes. Then they all sit back on their heels and look to Alice waiting for their prize. Alice stands up um, uh, and then she remembers. She has a box of currants in her pocket. She falls halfway forwards and she gives a current to each of the little animals. One for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you. Oh, all these cute little animals. It reminds Alice of her pet cat, Dinah, coming into cat pose on all fours. Alice's cat, Dinah. She's lovely. 
She tells them all about how sharp Dinah's claws are, like a tiger, reaching out one leg behind you and reaching out one claw and make your claws really sharp. Rawr! And the other way, bring your hand and foot down and stretch out the other side. Rawr! But hearing about Dinah isn't very good for the little mouse coming into mouse pose all the way down with your arms down by your side. And she squeaks off. Squeak, 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 squeak. Coming up to sit, the birds flutter away too. They don't like the sound of Dinah. Coming into bird pose, standing up, feet together, folding halfway forward and your arms down. Then reach, lifting and lowering your wings. Wow. Wonderful birds, everyone. And a crab digger diggers over to Alice, coming into crab pose, sitting on your bottoms, knees bent, feet flat, hands behind you, fingers pointing towards your bottom. Lift your bottom up and digger digger that way over to Alice. Here we go. Digger, 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 digger. He says to Alice, stop going on about Dinah. And then he digger diggers off. Digger, 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 digger. <laughs> Alice sits all alone again. She has a little look around, using her cosminoculars, thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. I spy a giant mushroom. And on that mushroom is a big blue caterpillar, lounging lazily, puffing on a pipe coming into caterpillar pose, lying on your bellies, everyone, hands under your shoulders, and wiggle, 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 wiggle all the way up. Puffing on his pipe. He says, who are you? Alice doesn't know who she is. All this growing big into giant Alice and tiny into little tiny Alice. She's got no idea. He begins to wiggle off. And he says, why don't you eat the mushroom? One side will make you shorter, the other side will make you taller. Good luck. Alice jumps to her feet, coming all the way up. Feet together, everyone. Bring your arms up above your head. She reaches one way to get one side of the mushroom and the other way to get the other side. Now she can adjust her size as she needs to. Up ahead, she sees a tree coming into tree pose. Bring one foot on top of the other, your hands together at your heart. Grow your tree up nice and tall. And, hmm, I wonder how strong the trees are here in Wonderland. You stay tall and strong. I'll have a go at blowing you down. Here I come. Doopy doopy doo. -doo. Oh my goodness, they are super strong here in Wonderland. Let's try it on the other side. Bring the other foot on top now, your hands together and grow your tree up nice and tall. Oh, can you open those branches? Very good. Now Alice can see something in the tree. There's a big cat sitting in the tree, coming into cat pose on your hands and knees. This cat has got the most ginormous grin on its face. Ding! And it says, as it moves its eyes one way without moving its head, that way for the March Hare. And then it moves its eyes to the other side. And that way for the Hatter. And then it disappears in a puff of smoke, walking your hands back to come up onto your tiptoes and do a big jump in the air. One, two, three. Woo! But it leaves behind its grin. Ding! Alice stands in confusion. Well, I have often seen a cat without a grin, but never a grin without a cat. She decides to head to the house of the March Hare. Jump your feet wide, hands above your head, coming into house pose. At the house of the March Hare, in the garden, is a large table set for a mad tea party. Coming into table pose, sitting on your bottoms, knees bent, feet flat, hands behind you, and lift your bottom up. Sat at this table is the March Hare, coming into hare pose. On your knees, 
Crisscross your fingers behind your back and stretch your arms out behind you. Then fold your head all the way forwards, lifting your arms like two long hair ears. There's also another guest at this table. Sitting all the way up again, it's the Hatter. Turning to the front, take your feet out behind you and see if you can just sit between your ankles. Now, if that's a bit ouchy on your knees or your ankles, sit up on your heels again. Yeah. Now crisscross your fingers, turn them inside out and lift up your arms above your head, making yourself a very wonderful top hat. And sat in between the hatter and the hare is a little dormouse. Coming into mouse pose, turning to the side on your knees, folding all the way forwards. The little mouse has got its cheek on the table and it's snoring loudly because it's asleep. <laughs> Alice decides to join them for tea and sits at a chair. Coming up to chair pose, standing up, feet a little bit wider, bend your knees. Now lift your arms up to the sky, coming into your chair pose. But Alice doesn't stay long because no one is making any sense whatsoever. They ask questions like, why is a raven like a writing desk? Alice stands up and runs off saying, this is the stupidest tea party ever. And she runs right into a garden where the Queen of Hearts sweeps in. Sitting on your bottoms, take your legs out long and then take your legs round to one side. Bring one hand onto your knee, your other hand behind you and look over your shoulder. The Queen has got her guards with her who are all playing cards. Let's be the two of diamonds. Coming up to stand, bring your feet together and turn your toes out, bringing your heels together and bend your knees. Now bring your arms above your head, joining your fingers above your head to make the two of diamonds. Well done, everyone. The queen sweeps in a little bit further to the garden, sitting down on your bottom again, legs out long, this time, take your legs round the other way. Sit up tall, bring your hand on your knee, your other hand behind you. Look over your shoulder and look back to the front. She spots Alice and she's not pleased. She says, off with her head. Alice stands up and she puts her hands on her hips, feeling as powerful as she can. And she says, nonsense. The Queen's eyes grow large as she glares at Alice silently. She says, do you play croquet? Alice replies, yes. And it begins the strangest game of croquet ever. The balls are hedgehogs coming into hedgehog pose. Down on your knees, folding all the way forwards. Now take your hands up behind you on your back and make them spiky like you've got prickles on the back of your back, like a hedgehog. And coming up to sit, the mallets are pink flamingos. Coming into flamingo pose, up to stand. Bring your hand all the way up and make it a little beak. Then see if you can hold your foot. Oh, try not to wobble and hop like a flamingo. Ooh, yes, very good, everyone, very good. And try flamingo on the other side. Bring your foot down, reach your other arm up, make your beak with your hand and hold your foot. Get your balance, try not to wobble and do a little hop. Ooh, yes, flamingos we are, indeed. And bring it all the way down and the hoops are made of playing cards balanced together in a triangle shape like our dog pose coming into dog on your hands and knees spread your fingers tuck your toes and lift your bottom up to the sky making your hoop shape very good everyone it was the strangest game of croquet ever coming to sit in the middle after that the queen takes alice to meet her griffin who has got the head of an eagle arms wide Swizzle your arms, wave with your underneath arm and twizzle them round. Ah, ah. Unravel your arms and bring them back. It's got the body of a lion. Let's do a lion pose with a big roar. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Rawr! Alice gets onto the back of the griffin and they fly together. Coming up to stand, your feet together, 
Fold halfway forwards and bring your arms down. The griffin spreads its wings and off they go to visit his friend, the mock turtle. Coming down to sit in turtle pose. Take your feet out, keep your knees bent and put your hands in the middle. Now slide your hands under your feet, under your legs and make two turtle flippers. And what a sad turtle he is. He says, let me tell you a sad, sad story. But before he can continue, the griffin interrupts him and changes the subject. Coming into your griffin head, cross your legs, arms wide. Now scissor your arms the other way and lift up your underneath arm, twizzle them round. He says, why don't we teach Alice the lobster dance instead? Alice thinks this is a wonderful idea. How much fun will that be? And they all take their positions in lobster pose. Coming up to stand, take your feet wide and turn your toes out a little bit. Now bend your knees, nice strong legs, that's it. Take your arms up and make yourself two little lobster claws. They join in with a little song and a dance. Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, won't you join the dance? Will you, won't you, won't you, won't you, will you join the dance? After that, there's a loud trumpet fanfare sound, like an elephant. Stretch your legs out long and bring your hand behind you like a little elephant's tail. Then lift up your other arm, making a trunk, and do a big trumpet sound. And again. Coming up to stand. It's the Queen's fanfare. She's calling everyone back to court for a trial. Someone has stolen the Queen's tarts. Jump your feet together and fall forwards. The Griffin and Alice fly back, lifting and lowering your wings. Yes, Alice arrives back and takes her seat in the court. Standing up tall, cross your legs and sit yourself down. Whoop, there we go. Now. Alice watches very carefully, using her cosmonoculars, thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. Hmm, she's trying to make sense of it all, but it's really hard. She switches on her listening ears, rubbing them from the bottoms to the tops. Hmm, what she's hearing doesn't make any sense either. She can't bear it any longer, so she stands up and she puts her hands on her hips and she says, what does this matter? You're just a pack of cards. And at that, all of the cards begin flying around her madly. Jump your feet wide, jump your arms wide and start to spin. They fly around and around in a whirlwind and they're scattering everywhere. Alice doesn't know what to do and she huddles herself down into a tiny little mouse pose. Tuck yourself up into a tiny little huddly ball, everyone. She keeps very, very still. After a while, Alice wiggles her fingers and toes and she feels something pitter-pattering on her back. Take your hands onto your back and pitter-patter. She comes up to sit to find that she's sat by the riverbank and her sister is brushing leaves off of her. She says, wake up Alice, it's time for tea. Alice stretches her arms up and says, I'll be there in a minute. And she takes a moment to lie down all the way on her back with her arms down by her sides. She closes her eyes and she thinks about the amazing dream she's just had. What an adventure. How amazing her mind and imagination are. It makes us think about our dreams too. How wonderful our imagination can be. The stories we think of, the places we can go in our head. Places like Wonderland, where all sorts of funny and strange things happen. How magical it can be. How special it is that we can go to these places and have all sorts of fun. Just like Alice, we slowly begin to wake up, wiggling our fingers 
our toes and bringing our knees into our chest to give them a little hug. We roll over onto our side and we come up to sit, opening our eyes with our legs crossed. We bring our hands together at our hearts and we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Well done, everyone. That was amazing. Thank you for coming on the Alice adventure with me. You were fantastic. I hope you come back soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye. That was fantastic. Well done, you. Now we have a Zen Den called Superpower Listening. This is where we're going to play a little game. You're going to hear lots of sounds and see if you can identify what's making those sounds using your superpower listening skills. Let's go. everyone, welcome to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den. This is where we help our minds stay healthy and happy. Let's begin by getting comfy. Sitting on our bottoms, legs crossed, with a long straight back. We rest our hands on our knees and take a big deep breath. In through our nose and out through our mouth. That's better. Now, let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's have some colour in here. Oh, lots of great colours to choose from. Let's pick a couple that help us feel relaxed. This lovely light blue would be nice. Wow, there. Oh, and what about mixing it with something, shall we? Yes, let's go for the violet colour. There we go, that's great. Now, the smell. Ooh, these look interesting. Book smell, mm, that could be quite nice. Feet smell, uh, not sure about that. Ah, yes. Let's smell the freshly baked cakes. Mmm, lovely smell. Fresh from the oven and still warm. Now, in our Zen Den today, we have a special game. It's a really good way to spot how our mind can jump around, even when we are concentrating on something. And the game is called... Super power listening. This is how it works. I'm going to make a few sounds using some of the things I found here in the Cosmic Kids Zen Den. And you are going to use your power listening to work out what the sounds are. Now, a top tip. You can boost your power listening to super power listening by closing your eyes. This makes your listening powers even more amazing. You decide how you want to play. Simple power listening or going up a level to super power listening. Just see if you can focus on the sound. Then have a guess at what you think it is. Ready? Here comes the first sound. So switch on your power listening now. And if you want to take it to the super power level, Close your eyes as well. Here we go. Did you get it? Let's listen one more time to double check. There. Did you get it? And did you notice if your mind started to think of anything else while you were listening? If you do notice this happening, see if you can just come back to the listening again. Let's try a new sound and see how you get on with this one. 
Oh, let's have it have it again. There we go. Could you tell what it is? Now the next sound is ready. Can you guess what this one is? Let's have a quick repeat of it. And what about this one? And again. Now finally this one. And one more time. So, what did you think those sounds were? Could you guess using your power listening or your superpower listening? And did your mind stay on the sounds or did it want to jump to something else? Could you notice that? It's great to be able to use superpower listening because it helps you learn how to focus like a superhero. They always use this skill to make their hearing or sight go a lot further. And now you know how to do it too. This means you'll be able to learn stuff really quickly. You'll be able to solve problems and do really clever things like remember how to spell long words like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and do crazy maths problems like 13 times 13. Training your concentration is huge and a brilliant thing to do. But if you are a kid and you're doing this, there's a good chance you'll master it before the grown-ups. So keep up the practice and soon you will become a true Cosmic Kid Zen Den Master. Bye bye! That was brilliant! Well done you! Now we're going to get the wriggles out. We're going to use some energy with a really exciting game of super yoga. In super yoga, you copy the moves as they come down on the screen and you score points for doing the poses. And at the end, you get a lovely relaxation where all the goodness of the points goes into your body. I hope you love it. Super yoga! Polar Bear Pose
snowboarding pose. You were great! Well done, you! Now we have some yoga poses in the Yoga Pose universe for you to learn. It's great to become a master of these poses because when you come to do the adventures, you'll be amazing. I hope you love it. The Cosmic Kids Yoga Pose Universe. Cat pose. Now, funnily enough, in yoga, cats are usually put together with cows. Yes, so it's called cat cow pose. Let's try it now. Come down onto hands and knees and spread your fingers nice and wide, tucking your toes. Let's start with the cat pose. Arching your back, looking into your tummy, and lengthening your spine. Now it's time to take it into the cow pose. We dip our belly down and we lift our tail and chest and wiggle waggle our tail. Very good everyone, breathing out. Now cat cow pose is very good for doing first thing in the morning when we wake up. It helps you feel tall again after you get out of bed. What I like to do is a few of them in a row. Let's try it again. Here we go. We're going to arch our back up, look into our tummy for our cat pose. Then we're going to dip our belly down, wiggle waggle our tail and lift our chest for our cow pose. Now let's see if we can do four or five in a row. Here we go. Cat. Cow. Cat. Cow. Cow. Oh, I could do this all day long. Cat cow pose.
sandwich pose. I love sandwiches. Coming to sit down on our bottoms with our legs out long. We start with our bottom slice of bread, bending our knees a little bit so we can reach our arms up and fold forwards, laying it down. Ready? Ooh. Now, sandwich pose is really good for calming our minds, making a little bit of quiet in our day and for stretching the backs of our legs and our backs. It's very good. Now, we need to put some butter on this bottom slice of bread. So sit up nice and tall, stretch your legs long and bring your hands in. Let's sing our butter song. Ready? Here we go. Butter, butter, butter. Butter, butter, butter. Butter, butter, butter. Tiny bit more. Butter, butter, butter. I think that's enough butter, don't you? Now we need to do the twists to put our fillings in our sandwich. Arms out wide. Now, as we do these twists, it's very good for our digestion and helping our tummies. We twist one way and we get our lettuce, Ooh. lovely lettuce. Here it is. Pop it in. Ooh. Mmm. Arms out wide again. We twist the other way to get some Ooh. cheeky cheese. Here it is. Cheese. Mmm. Arms out wide again. We twist the other way. And I think we need some tasty tomatoes. Yes. Bringing them forwards. Let's chop them. Chop, 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 chop. Mmm. Arms out wide. And let's twist this way again and get another nice little bit of lettuce just to go on top. Here we go. Ooh. Yummy. Now we need that top slice of bread. Reach your arms up nice and high. Bend those knees a little bit and fold forwards. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, delicious. Oh. That was quick. Sandwich pose. Well done, that was great. Now we have a lovely Peace Out for you. Peace Out is our guided relaxation series and it really helps your brain and your body totally calm and chill out. It's very, very good for you and I hope you feel wonderful afterwards. Peace Out. Cozy Cats. Hello, Jamie here. Welcome to Peace Out. First, let's get comfy. Find a space and either lie down on your back or tummy, or if you prefer, you can sit with your legs crossed or in a chair. Take a moment now to decide which works best for you. Now, take a moment to settle so you feel really comfy. When your body feels happy and you're feeling like you can be still, see if you can relax even more and let your body feel heavy. You can keep your eyes open or close them. It's up to you. Can you notice your breathing? Maybe slow it down a little bit so you can feel it. Coming in and going out. You might even be able to feel the air as it goes in and out of your nose. If you're sitting or lying on your back, place a hand on your tummy. See if you can feel the air filling it up and emptying with each breath in 
and out, in and out, in and out. Next time, as you breathe out, if you haven't already, let your eyes softly close. Notice how when you close your eyes, you switch off all the stuff going on around you and you are just inside yourself. You can still hear me, but you can enjoy being in your mind too. Now we can go on our adventure. With your eyes closed, your mind can make the pictures for you, just like a dream. You are inside a lovely warm house. You just had a bath and now you're in your pyjamas. Outside it's cold. The rain is tapping on the windows and the wind is blowing in the trees. You feel very glad to be inside, all warm and dry. Down around your legs, you feel something warm and furry. It's a cat. It gives you a rub with its nose and soft furry body. It looks up at you and heads into the living room. Before it goes, the cat looks at you as if to say, Come on, follow me. Cats are very good at communicating, using their minds, you think, and you follow it. There in the living room, the fire is lit. It crackles peacefully. The cat goes to the rug in front of the fire to sit down. You follow and sit down beside the cat. Maybe this is a game where you do everything the cat does. It's called copycat. It slowly looks from you to the fire. You do the same, looking from the cat to the fire. And enjoy watching the warm yellow flames. You look back at the cat and you see its eyes are slowly blinking, closing its eyes for a few seconds, then opening them. You copy the cat, closing your eyes for five, four, three, two, one, then opening them for three, two, one, slowly closing them again. Five, four, three, two, one. The cat lays down and curls onto its side. It rolls a little to find a really comfy spot, then sighs out through its nose and settles, just like you did when we began. You calmly watch the cat sleeping, all furry and cosy, its body slowly rising and falling as it breathes. Occasionally its ears twitch, like it's still listening out for any sounds coming from elsewhere in the house. You listen too, gently noticing any sounds you can hear around you. Lying here by the fire with the cat, you feel so warm and peaceful, calm and sleepy. In your heart, you feel like you might be a cat as well, just like this one. Such a cosy feeling. You feel thankful to the cat for showing you how you can be just as cosy and peaceful. Slowly now, start to come back, deepening your breath. Start to move your fingers and toes. 
take a nice big stretch and slowly, gently open your eyes. Before you move anywhere, just take a moment to notice how you feel now. Different maybe to how you felt before your peace out. It's been so lovely to feel as cosy as cats. I hope you can take that feeling into other times in your life. Times when you want to feel cosy, safe and sleepy. Well done you. This is Jamie saying peace out. <laughs>